And I think it really did change the practice of uh, pharmacology, not just for me, but for internists, obstetricians, and uh, you know, GPs, and 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 psychiatrists in general. Yeah. And it, and it changed it in all sorts of ways. And one of the ways was that you got early hints of this response in patients. So these were very workable medicines. I mean, you have to go back and know what doctors were working with. They were working with imipramine, dizipramine, and these drugs had lots of side effects, dry mouth, constipation, problems with vision, and you'd start very low and go, go slowly, and you know, months later you'd find out that this medicine worked or didn't work, uh -huh. and even if it worked, people were living with side effects they didn't like to live with, or there'd be some crisis, you know, urine retention or that mm -hmm. you'd have to pull back. With Zoloft, say, you know, you found out very soon if the person was doing well. There are all kinds of side effects people worry about now and, and write about and think about, but largely people didn't feel medicated. And actually it made the therapy more nimble. So you could wait a while and do some psychotherapy and know that you could come in with a medicine late. Mm -hmm. uh, you might actually medicate less on average because you knew what you had in your back pocket. Uh, or you could take someone off medication and know that if they had a crisis seven months down the road, you could come back in and, and get a fairly quick response. So there's a lot of, uh, it, it was just, a, even if these medicines were no more effective than imipramine, and probably they are no more effective, mm -hmm. some people say less effective, the fact that patients could live with them and that you could uh, manipulate them rather readily made them a much more central part of psychiatric practice.